Oh. And here we go. This is Flash. Here's Johnny. Oh, sorry. Graham Z. (laughs) At the dork table. She's prematurely dorking. But... (laughs) We have had quite the trying year so far. 2020's been a blast. Or maybe like or maybe like a bean cold bean dip enema, you know. Hey, you, you know, know what? I finally saw a meme that actually made sense of that whole saying 2020 hindsight. <laughs> it was it was a dog looking at different dogs' backsides yeah. and another dog optometrist was going, "Oh, you've got 2020 hindsight." <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I know. Dork table. Date is yeah. the 14th of March in 2020. It's Pi Day. And uh, we managed to do this, get this far without even having to get grim on any desk to fix something I broke. But thanks Yay. for thanks for all the help you'll be giving me in the future. <laughs> I know I'll do something sooner or later. I usually do. And then uh, we got the bots and bodies for your typing entertainment on the RLM chat. You want to say hey to the bots and bodies, Miss Mary? Okay, let me. Or do you? You there. want to just ignore yeah, these bastards yeah. this week? Yeah, I want to say hey. <laughs> hey there, hi there, ho there. Right up top, we got mm. Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Beetle. Beetle. Hey, Beetle. How's it going? How's it going? <sighs> Beetle's, Beetle's having a test right now. Yeah, I thought he was dentist. back. Okay, I must. Well, I've lost. Track well, no, test. I don't mean that kind of. He's not getting a med- medical test, but he is being tested. Oh, his patient. Yes. Yeah. Well, the universe is, has given him something to test him. My yeah, thoughts, at like least. That, I also see yeah. the lovely Grimner and lovely Grimner. Or maybe, Grimner. Oh, yeah, it's something about that. the beard. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what it, that's what everybody says. Hey, look look yeah. at that lovely Grimner fella. <laughs> Just don't say well, it out he loud very often. Said he's gonna get laid, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, we also yeah. got the lovely Miss Kate is here from down in the great state of Florida, and I saw that she's got strawberries and bananas, and color me jealous in my blanket fort, or maybe now I would, no, it's not a toilet paper fort, because I, unlike many people, did not freak and panic about, oh my god, we're out of toilet paper, I I have two packages of toilet paper. Mm. I always have two packages of toilet paper. Mm. Well, not always, but when I get down to the last package of toilet paper, I Mm. always go out and buy another one so I don't have to worry about running out. So I'm not, Uh, I'm not like one of those freak out. Yeah, I can beat that. I got a a package and a half of paper towels because, well, I've gotten into my last package of paper towels, so I went and got another one. But I got a cat. You have a cat? Mm-hmm. Oh, do you do you use that? I would if I had to. <laughs> Have you heard that joke mm. about the bear and the rabbit? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, we don't. Sure we have. won't go any further. You can. <laughs> <laughs> you can repeat. I like reruns. But okay. Well, this bear I felt is like in the or in too. the you know because bears do shit in the woods. Okay. I don't know about the Pope. <laughs> the bears do, and he was in the woods, and he was taking a. Dump. Actually, why did they take? And he was leaving. Leaving a dump. Yeah. And this rabbit hopped by, and he looked at the rabbit, and he goes, "Yo, rabbit, does shit stick to your fur?" And the rabbit just kind of stopped and gave him one of those what? looks and said, "Uh, well, no, Mister Bear, it does not. Why do you ask?" And the bear picks up the rabbit, and proceeds to wipe his backside with it. So, boom, 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 boom. There you go. <laughs> Furry animals will also. No furry animals were shit on during the production of this show. For any of you PETA people that are out there having fits. Screw PETA people in the eye. Oh, uh, yeah. Dumb, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, they are hypocritical. Dumb, dumb too. Just but, fucking totally you not know, total dumbasses. They don't know. Job. They I don't know. know that they stand about all this legal shit that they preach at people. They don't even know what it means. It's very embarrassing if you know what I'm talking about. Back to the hellos. I shut up. Back to the hellos. We got anti. I and, love you, uh, anti. Oh, she loves the anti. Yeah. Well, I love everybody. There's just some people that I don't really like at any particular moment because yeah. the behavior that they're exhibiting is not likable. 
Well, I was but fighting. But I love them anyway yeah, because was, they are a wonderful example for me. Whether it's a good example or a, I'm not going to go there example, they're still a wonderful example. I was fighting with Rob Works about that earlier. Oh yeah. I told him I'm going to defend myself with Cirque's love beam. <laughs> there you go. You cannot like violate the love beam. No, Soikold has a massive love beam. There you go. It's like if they were to launch her into the upper atmosphere and she fired that love beam, everybody would love everybody. Because that's how powerful minute. it is. That's kind of on the verge of kinky there, little missy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're well. not so sure we want everybody being that nice, if you know what I mean. Oh. Some people well, need restriction, like, uh, you know, POTUS Biden. That boy oh. needs to keep, yeah, he needs to have his hands duct taped to his nuts so he'll leave other people alone. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're talking about Biden there? He oh, see, yeah. And I repeat, POTUS Biden. Because, see, what's oh, going to happen this time is Trump's going to win the popular vote and the Electoral College is going to fuck him and give it to the Democrats. Oh, it, thanks. The opposite of what happened. Oh, come on. they got to entertain the masses. I know, I know, I know. The end of the that, world is just too permanent. We need Joe Biden to run it for a few years. <laughs> well, no. We, if Joe Biden got in there, people would be praying for it. Please let the world end. <laughs> keeping, oh, my God. Keeping that idiot out of the press when he was the number two guy was their number one job. His, his quotes are so ignorant that you don't really know what he's talking about. See, that's where truth is stranger than fiction. I mean, he, he really rambles. Says, he rambles like worse than me, Mary. Rambles. Nutshell. Oh, dude, seriously. It's like when I hear him rambling, even I can't understand it. And the conversations uh, that go on inside my head. Yeah, uh, you're pretty patient. Yeah, you don't want to go there. <laughs> so, back to okay. saying, hey. Hi, hey. Asmo. Asmo. Yeah, Asmo. 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 We also got a Chalsa Denis in here as well. It's the lovely Cyclo. Hello, Cycolo. honey. Huh? Oh, the love machine, Cyclo. <laughs> She's going to get a giggle out of hearing this. I, think. I hope. Hi, Diam Van Meter. Diam. You're in there, too. That flash somebody as well hey, as me. Hey, I'm right behind you. What hey, the hell? No. Mary. Okay, I got to click on. Imagine being so status that you want your government, want a government for your government. Wow, that hmm. is. Sad. <laughs> well, where Good did you one, read Grim. that? Oh, uh, uh, uh. oh, it mean, it. it's from my a memer. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is that is sad. I want uh, someone else to govern the government. How about we just tell the yeah. government? No, thank you. Boy, we you sure are Captain Buzzkill here, aren't you? I know, wow, you're just I am. Stomping all over his joke. I see a buzz and I gotta kill it. I see that. Uh, Java okay. Doctor Two. <laughs> oh hey. <Woody. laughs> what? Hey what? By April fifteenth, the tax deadline, we might get corona relief. Well, I'm thinking <laughs> I'm thinking if we don't have to pay any kind of income tax, that's Corona relief right there. Pop a Corona and put a slice of lime. Yeah. I also see Meister Brower is here as well as Prince. Not the huh. purple one, the one that is in print. Yeah. And looky there, Rob Woikes. And you and Rob Woikes and Larry Woods are going to be doing a new show on Thursdays, correct, Flasher? Yeah, we already did too. And- they were just kind of happenstance, planned a little bit, but not really. Just let's see what we can do with this. And uh, Rob I, and Larry get along so well that they, hey, let's do this every week. And we'll just start with whatever we think of at the time. So, oh, cool. Yeah, I have no idea what direction or what these guys might have planned on their end. All I'm doing is really pretty much um, presenting it. So it's available, and I do the production in the back. Oh, yeah. so you're like the guy that that introduces Johnny Carson. Well, I was not anymore, but, very, you know, you. I was very quiet or, for almost a whole hour of a. Oh man, did yeah. you almost pop? No, it was just I was trying to. <laughs> uh, I was trying to keep the bullshit talk 
you know, to a bare minimum, because these guys are really seriously talking about something. And then at, after about an hour, I felt like, okay, that's enough time for everybody to, you know, get their, you know, brain sack filled. Let's relax the mood and just be me. And it worked. It all balanced out. And Sweet. Rob was, did you ever see that movie, A uh, Few Good Men, where you can't handle the truth? Yeah. That's what I was thinking of when Rob was questioning Larry about how the fucking coil works. It was an amazing show. I really had a lot of fun listening to the two of these guys. Well, I'm going to have to catch up on on some listening of that. I've been trying to catch up on stuff because I've been rather busy with family. But okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I understood. I will, understood. I will play catch up. Yeah. Not the tomato kind in the fridge that when you squeeze the bottle, it farts. Which Woodman! I <laughs> no. No. Are we there? No. no. Did I, don't I know. say my cigar already? I don't I think know. I did. Well, yeah, but Woodman work. is on after weather oh. work. Oh. Okay. I don't know. I just said something because we were okay. way off. I also Rome. Mm. This is here when in Rome's do as the Rome. Sherlock do. Rome's. That's right. We also have the lovely Miss Vanna White, the letter turner of the RLM channel, closely followed by Weatherdork, <laughs> who is also trying to cop a feel while she's turning letters because Weatherdork <laughs> is for Vanna. <laughs> Woodman. There's Uh-oh. Woodman. Hey, told you. Uh, hey, Dork Wood. Cakes. Just popped we in also got the Phantom. Phantom is here. Mental. And. Yeah. Bruce Dickinson. Hi, Bruce, Bruce Dickinson. Dickinson. Call me Bruce. Yeah, but don't <laughs> call me Dick. Yeah. That, that guy. Yeah. yeah. You Sean call me Sarah. cock, boy. <laughs> <laughs> A dick's about Sean this Sarah big. Sarah I got it. Oh, never mind. I got it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've got Cyborgian the worst. Cyborgian noodle. That's what I got for you. I got a cyborgian noodle, and may you all be touched by the cyborgian noodliness of it, as well as the wonderful dark cakes. Hey, cakes, how you doing, hon? Hmm. And looky there, dimmer. It's dimmer than some people, but not as dim as most. Think about that one. We also have an E man and an N sieve, and. Frumpy and Frumpy Woik, too. So, see, we got a double dose of Frumpy going on, which, yeah, I'm feeling rather Frumpy today because it's cold outside, so I'm not dressing up. I also see I am Lone Frog. Hey, Froggy. Frog. How you doing, hon? And, uh-huh. yeah, well, he's a frog, not a toad. Uh-huh. <laughs> I guess that matters if you're a predator. Well, it does matter because what kind of predator brother. eats lone frog? Ooh, we was out hunting lone frog on the Ponderosa. <laughs> I mean, what? I don't know. I, I don't. Who I hunts don't. frogs for a source of food besides the French? Because they like frog legs. Ooh, they do like their frog legs. Do they Ooh. hunt these frogs? Are they armed when they hunt frogs, I, or do they just their hunt leg? Them? I think they have nets. Maybe they just got in the water and act like other frogs and then catch them. <laughs> oui, oui, monsieur. We get in no. the similar water well, and that, catch some frogs. We're just Frad and frog legs. Bash, mm, we're just openly bashing a culture we don't live in for no particular reason. Why? Because. We're American. Because the melting because. pot. Created us this because way. Because of the wonderful things that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, <laughs> Jake. <laughs> Great. <laughs> mental. How you doing out there, mental pancakes? Uh, JJ's. No, 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 JJ's. JJ's. Not JJ's. Okay. JJ's. Feller. Feller. With the kilt, kilt down, up baby. to your eyeballs. Or keeps the ladies going. Hey, what the fuck? Dude, this I poor man can't afford pants. Pom sauce. That pom sauce ca- happens when, well, moving along. Hi, Smartaz. We also, <laughs> oh, Froggy says stork scare him. Duh, there's always Sorry. something. His natural predator is a stork. Uh huh. And the stork and brings the baby. So, oh, boy, this uh, is going to be a conflict. Interest. I can see oh, it. bring out the Jew lawyers. Come on, Jew lawyers, get in here and save us. I'm wondering if nine hmm. months from now we have a massive bunch of babies born. 
Uh, it's due to the corona epidemic. Yeah, it's probably, yeah. Well, That's why I'm hoping people bought condoms when they bought toilet paper. Why? Uh, they bought condoms to keep their fingers warm where they're pushing buttons that they don't want to touch. <laughs> uh, oh, ah, yeah. I saw a video someone took the other day in a Walmart or something where people had plastic bags over their heads. Yeah. Well, you know, you know what? what? Those plastic bags that you get your produce in, yeah. they put those over their heads. And you know where they cut the opening? Where their eyes are. Yeah. They left plastic over their nose and mouth, <laughs> 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 but cut it open where wow. their eyes were. Man, the I shallow thought, the shallow end is so fun to observe. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Culling the herd. Yeah. Let me tell you. Exactly. What? How the gene it... pool is getting cleansed as we speak. Yeah. Well, first you take out the crippled and the old, and then you work on the ignorant and the lame, and then what you got left, yeah. you shoot at with live rounds because we're dangerous ah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and to round out the crew we got a holiest roger ever and z picks in the chat see made it all the way through and it only took 16 minutes even so with what? all the jibber jabber yeah, that's, stuff. we're doing an old-fashioned door table today i've had so much uh in intellectual reality shoved in my freaking face in the last couple of weeks with uh, Rob Works and Larry Woods, because that stuff's real. Me and you, we play around. Sometimes we're talking serious, and other times we're not. Those guys are serious. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do, Vern. Okay, because sometimes you get on your, you know, angry side about medical or something, but for the most part, we dork around and just ha try to have a little bit of fun. But the world is not, they're not in tune with that right now. I don't think. They're in panic mode. They want to arm up, fight the enemy, and have plenty of paper to wipe their ass with while they shit their self into freedom. Because <laughs> yep. I don't know what the fuck all this hoopla is about. Uh, you post this thing, right? Earlier, before the show, way, way earlier in Ireland, and Cirque made some comment about that particular thing to me yesterday. And said that what it's really about, if I understand her right, it it really affects the citizens here, not everybody else. It's hard. To, it looks one way on paper, and it's another way in real life. No, it is exactly what it is. It is. Well, I don't see them with the manpower to do these. See, I, nah, I don't know, because I've been out and see the stores and out in public and whatnot. And they've got like a little bit of distancing. In the uh, where I went to get hardware at the tool store, they're trying okay. to keep their distance from each other. But we're all in all the food stores and whatnot. We're all crowded together like usual. Uh huh. You know? and, well, then there's a guy I've been mentioning about. Him. His name is Max, and he's uh, been working the cash register thing. He, that's what he does. And he's got the gloves on, and he looks right at me and puts his hands up and wiggles his fingers and laughs. So he wants me to know that what he thinks of it. And we don't, he doesn't speak very much English, but I've yeah. known the man since I moved here. I'm where we were familiar uh -huh. with each other to the point of, yeah. So he's laughing at this coronavirus scare and he's my age. Yeah. Well, there you go. Oh, see, and there's uh, there's all kinds of places out there that are starting to call it fear porn. Yeah, well, what more could it – it's a very convincing, and they hit us at a really good time. Because who doesn't have a little – if you're a smoker like me. I was in this time of year end up with a little nose problem or blah, 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 because I smoke too much. But I don't feel ill. And I kind of get pissed off because – this has been a month of this, and I don't know anybody that knows anybody that's been hit by this virus. We just read about links. Eh, and over in that country, 5,000 million people got it, and five of them died. Oh, God, it's the end. What? Yeah, well, the <sighs> end is near. These are and the right behind the end, standing there patiently, thinking, mm -hmm. are you going to get over with it yet or not, <laughs> is the beginning. And the beginning's going, 
guess what? I have got something for you, but you got to do it yourself. Don't we yeah. all, though? I mean, really in yeah. the end. I mean, but, you know, the the threat. See, this is what I learned from about the World War II thing, right, was the threat or the story about a horrific situation is just enough. You don't need to prove it. You just need to say it happened. And if you tell enough people the same story, they're going to have a percentage of those people that are going to believe that forever. You will never change their mind because of the way they heard it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I would be considered a Holocaust denier because I don't believe those were death camps. They were slave camps. And you don't oh, yeah. you don't mistreat your slaves to get them to produce. You gotta treat people to a some degree like they're human. You know, like all the way they do it in the movies makes slaves look like they are all treated like shit and horrible and No, that that's kinda of stupid. How how do you not get poisoned by a slave that wants to fuck you up? Okay? Well, unless your slaves are Irish, and then they don't care. They just treat them like total crap because the Irish slaves were treated way worse than the black slaves over here in the United States. So, Well, according – see, there you go. Though. Well, according, according to his story, yeah. But I think just being a slave in its own, that's the problem right there. That's it. You don't need to belittle and whip and hurt any further. At those times when you couldn't survive if you didn't have a source of food and water, you you know, you were more desperate to take what was offered to you. So, not me. I would split. Fucking take my chances somewhere. But these other kind of people, they succumb to the threat and they stay willingly, but they call it slavery. How are you a fucking slave to anybody? Because you're doing it. Ah, but it's a comfortable slavery. Mm -hmm. At least for many. That's what I mean. And, it's survival And many really slavery. enjoy having this slavery so they have something to bitch about. You know? That's the way I would look at it today. But the way I'm talking about it in the past is it was a means of survival, too, as well. Yeah. In an unknown world without electronics and gadgets to fucking help you get through your day simply. They had, in that respect, you know, like video, oh, they had a harder life. Yeah, well, they had other things that balanced it out. Unless they were, of course, what I'm talking about now, poor. Poor people suffer no matter what. That's what poor people do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. The, the sad part about how society operates and how it talks about one thing, but it operates the, the exact way it says not to. Like, don't be in debt. Being in debt is bad, you know, right? Mm -hmm. and then go get a house without going into debt or a car or whatever, maybe in a spaceship to go to fucking Pluto. Whatever you buy, these pricks are going to charge you a tax for buying the fucking thing. Now, we supposedly consent to this crap that we live in, but I don't. And I openly don't. I tell everybody, fuck you, I don't. And the strange part about it is the people that I tell that particular stuff to already agree with me. <laughs> in fact, in so many ways, they've made that clear to me. And now it's my responsibility to be part of the group to repeat back, you know, the right things at the right time and not be a, a weirdo statist. That doesn't belong. <laughs> and I'm in Denmark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. People are, uh, they're very kind. It's, it, they tolerate things out of kindness instead of superiority. It's different. It, it's a whole different world. Oh, well, yeah. To me. Maybe it's because I'm from somewhere else. I look at them and see what I want to see. I don't know. But they treat the, the beggar that we have here, the Romanian beggar, he's still here. So, hmm, I don't know. You know, that nobody do-gooder has got him off the street for his own good because he might get sick of the corona thing and die. Ah. But he's the right age. So little things like this, the stupidest little details, just make me wonder, 
maybe what they're telling us is just another misrepresentation. There's something out there, and it's getting us, blah, 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 but not doing what they tell us, like everything else. Mm-hmm. Well, well it, mm, yeah. They claim this and that. If you get sick from cancer, that if you do a little research, you'll find out is man-made. The reaction oh, yeah. that we have to it is in, it's, it's encouraged by the foods and shit we eat <laughs> and trying well, to get cancer, around it Cancer all. is a symptom of yeah. a deeper dis-ease. Okay, that's a better way to put it, but I'm not as good at this as you still. But well, I'm staying healthy for a guy, you know, a fellow my age. By God, I'm looking rather swell. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well... You know, and, and, you know, some, I just, that's my biggest thing. I think that's why I've been looking at, looking for funnies and stuff like that. Because people are just, oh, so, so beyond out there. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, my Lord. I mean, next thing you know, we're going to run out of kitty litter because people are thinking, oh, my God, there's no toilet paper. So now i got to go start using the cat box kind of thing. It finally it, hit me today. Oh, the, the reason they're buying all the toilet... I didn't understand this for the longest time till today. It was this. They're got, worried about being locked down for two weeks. But they don't know when that two weeks could be. So their panic mode is like over fucking gone. <laughs> they're oh, yeah. Freaking well, the, the reptilian mind it. has been triggered. It's fight or flight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the other day I noticed the shelves were empty of certain vegetables and then today i didn't need i didn't pay attention that i knew they had what i wanted today but not an egg to be found so hmm, i wondered so i went to the other grocery store to see the other store had eggs but people panic differently here over different products see and when i went to the store the other day Hmm. and my reasoning for going to the store was because we had winter weather advisory, and I thought, okay, there are a couple of things that I am out of, so Mm. I need to get to the store and get those, so if I'm locked in for a while, I at least have those. And, yeah, there was was not a whole lot of toilet paper left on the shelf. There was Um, some, but not a whole lot. There was paper towels. There was Kleenex. There was all that other fun. There was lots of eggs. Milk case was full. And, you know, people were not running around like crazy buffoons fighting over things and okay it was at walmart and yes there was only one checkout lane open (laughs) but you know it's like people out here just don't seem to i mean there wasn't a lot of toilet paper left on the shelves but you know that's a, a junior college town too so i'm sure they had junior college kids going in there going oh my god because they've been taught common core and that in and of itself is enough to damage brain cells. And then when you add to it all of the inoculations they've gotten, which while I'm on inoculation, inoculate yourself from the bullshit in the media, please, people. Do a little bit of educating of yourself and exercise a little bit of critical thinking. That's probably one of the smartest exercises you could do right now. But it's, it's not... It's not nuts out here. People aren't yeah. totally batshit. Yeah, here time. either, yeah. But there's just little little weird things that are happening, but... Hmm. That's how, but it, that's it how, is one of the... And that's the herd mentality kicking in. So I was know, getting you, at. Bigger things yeah. come when they start out small like this, and in six months, if they're not done away with, they're huge. Yeah, well, see, once you trigger that fight-or-flight response, that reptilian part of the brain, then it it becomes a frequency. It becomes yeah. a vibe. Yeah, then and you're in spread. fear. You can't do yeah. anything but but satisfy that emotion because yeah. it's impossible to do anything but that. That's the whole point. You're not physically capable of controlling it. Unless you have a yeah. really, really, really strong you know, vibe of your own. And uh, quite frankly, I don't know a whole hell of a lot of people like that. Quite Shane Kane. 
Well, yeah. James Bond. Yeah. Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, that's all part of that programming paradigm. Pinocchio. <laughs> well, Pinocchio's got a really good nose. <laughs> <for pain. laughs> tell a lie. Tell the truth. Tell a lie. Tell the truth. <laughs> 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 lie, you bastard! Lie. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you know, if it ain't one thing, it's another, and they just stack one on top of another until they get the reaction that they're looking for. And that's why I'm looking for all the silliness out there, so I can go, <laughs> yay! Okay, I'm not there. I feel much better. Thank you. And then I raise my own frequency because I laugh. Even if I'm laughing at someone, I'm still laughing, which raises the frequency, releases endorphins, all that other fun stuff. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. you know, see, what the reason, and I'm going to go back to the earlier part of the show when I was claiming my side, the way I see this coronavirus bullshit unfolding mm -hmm. before me, they don't have the manpower to physically do all the things they're talking about doing. And then they tell everybody this. We don't have the manpower that can proper this, masks and tests and all this other shit. We're not prepared for any of that. But what we are prepared to do is lock mm -hmm. you down for two weeks. So my assessment, I survived three end-of-the-world virus attacks in a state. And this is the fourth one since I left the States. So that's a total of seven. So, and I still today know people alive that were alive when all this crap started back in 2002. So, hmm, maybe they're just kind of fucking us with our, with our own intellect and our own ability to understand this complex coronavirus and how it attacks and kills and maims and look at all these things it does and while it's doing its thing nobody's reporting a fucking murder <laughs> the cops ain't shooting anybody anymore you know politicians aren't lying nobody's exposing anything it's all about this fucking lockdown and this fucking virus we're all gonna die nice knowing you Mary. Yeah, well, you know, the meat suit's going to expire. That doesn't mean that we're going to die. It just means the meat suit's going to expire, and we're going we're gonna to get a redo. We won't remember that it's a redo, but it'll be a redo. You know, Larry has had a – you really should listen to the last show we just did. It was really good. Uh, and Larry has his own version of being uh, murdered by electricity, basically. It killed him. And he says that he remembers – seeing himself being brought back to, you know, earthly life. Of course, now you can't tell another guy, you didn't see that, what are you, nuts? Yeah. Because that's, how do you know what other people see? Well, some of us don't have the ability to get beyond, oh, that's not real, that's not possible. Well, it's his version of what happened. So, hmm. And then he comes off with all these ideas about how to help other people. And, and when mm -hmm. it, when I think about all the the equation, you know, the whole picture instead of just part of it, wow, what Larry says seems to be not only honest but bizarre at the same time. So it's if nothing else, it's interesting, and I'm leaning towards the reality of they've got a prototype of this thing he's been explaining to me and Rob for quite a quite a well now while now. And he says when they made that prototype, it proved to them they're convinced it's not just a theory and it's got a working model. Now it's the next step. And they're, what they're trying to do is not attract big money to come and fuck it all up and ruin it for them. And that's why what they're talking about is not in a physical end result because big people don't want them to do it for one. And, yeah. and, and people that invest in things... They only do it for a million dollar reward. You know, they want stuff. That they're not looking to help. They're looking to gain. So this kind of a project is going to be slow to be you know, become real. But when it does, 
it's going to change the way that people see things as they prove it works. Oh, yeah. Well, once upon a time, they laughed at you when you said, hey, I'm going to fly. I'm going to fly to France. But no, you're not, Wilbur. You're in Delaware, you idiot. I'm going to fly to France. I'm telling you. Guess what they can do now, Mary? Uh, uh, I don't know. What can they do now? Fly to France. Wow! Mm -hmm. Just like Wilbur said. Or was it Orville? I'm not sure which one <sighs> said it first. It was one of them. Though. They went, hey! Yeah. Guess what I'm going to do, buddy? Well, I guess think what well, I think that every crazy freaking idea that we've ever laughed at some group of dorks and geeks and nerds got together and made us all laugh. You know, look at we we, we did it. <laughs> Who's laughing now, fucker? <laughs> you know, and they've done it with all the horrible, destructive shit. They've run out of ways to, you know, what's left? They've got to start doing something different is what's left. They lost their audience. So hmm, now we're all on yeah. lockdown. lockdown. We're being well, protected. They lost, yeah, they lost their audience because they pushed it just a little bit too far. And mm. there was just enough bullshit meters still active yeah. amongst the populace that mm. people started going, wait a minute. <laughs> wait well, a minute. Don't, don't you find it kind of weird that after all these years, the only Democrat that they have worth running for POTUS is Joe Biden. I mean, I don't really care much for Trump, but Creepy Joe, I wouldn't want Creepy Joe around my wife. I wouldn't want Creepy Joe around my dog. Yeah, well, nah, my, Hannah, Hannah's a dog. Dog sniff balls. It's no big deal. Of course, yeah, seeing well, a human sniff, sniff her ass might be a little weird. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he I'm would like, try the Heine liquor with my cats, and I'm afraid one of my cats would scratch his eyeballs out. Well, Mary, I found myself in a very dorkular dilemma regarding Joe Biden. Uh-oh, and that is? Well, we got Trump. So I figured, well, I know what I'll do. If Joe Biden teams up with Jesus, I'll vote for Biden. Well, because you know... Biden's not going to make it past, like, the first few months anyway. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. if he has Shrillery as his running mate, because he will develop a lethal case of something. That's why he desperately needs Jesus, because whoever he runs with is going to replace him. <laughs> I wonder well, if he, he needs, knows it. He needs <laughs> Jesus to raise him from the dead but and I, heal his sickness. I still wonder if he knows it. <laughs> I mean, they portray this guy. He's a, okay. To me, these politicians are the same as movie actors. They're no, oh, yeah. They're it's no reality different. TV. I, I, don't know, I don't know these guys and gals from, you know, anything. So how do I know they're showing me the real them? Mm -hmm. yeah, I am well, not a crook. I earned every dollar I have. Yeah. I may not have earned that legally, but legal, really? What's legal anyway? Ask not what your country could do for you. Ask what you could do for your country. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? People seem to not realize that if they don't take care of themselves first, they're not going to be around to do anything for their country. But you know what so, Trump? You know what Trump is known for. This is the, the Trump quote that he's going to be remembered for. Just like the last two, they'll be remembered for saying those two things. Uh -huh. Trump is going to be remembered for saying this. Grab them by the pussy. They they love that. They they love it. Did he really say that? Or yep. is that just a bullshit no, thing? No, I've seen the... He has his link of him talking to this younger guy. It was in his younger days. And he's bragging to this younger guy. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm powerful by that. Yeah, grab them by the pussy. They love that shit. Just talking all that locker room shit that I really oh. never participated in, but have read about over the years. I, uh, it's, I don't know. 
It's kind of childish. But that's how Trump talks to people on video. Oh, very sad. And when, when I saw that guy taking over his POTUS, I thought, do the people that support him really know the kind of man he really is? Well, okay, are you the same person that you were? Well, yeah, you are, but you're not. Are you the same person that you were when you were 17, 20, 25? In the sense of how I physically uh, treat females in public, yep. You betcha. See, and I know people that were just total douches. Right, and no, uh, like, I like I went to school with that were they were really total douches, and they're pretty decent people now. They have learned <laughs> a lesson, okay. and yeah. and you know they're they're actually quite fun and interesting to have a conversation with. So, you know, people can change. I'm mm. not ever going to say that nobody can change it. Some just because someone 40 years ago did something, that means that they're doing it now too. But, you know, that that is a marker that, hey, whoo, they did that at one time. Yeah, did but, they okay, learn from so, that experience? Yeah, but, Are they still yeah, that? Mary, Mary. Trump's, what, 74 years old or something like that? Yeah. Okay. Something, I don't know, right. older so, than me. So he, instead of running around talking about grabbing him by the pussy, now his latest crap is how nobody is a better authority at this than me. I know more than anybody on earth about this because, I mean, are, what, president? Well, possibly uh, from his perspective, he does. What an idiot. How ignorant do you have to be to say a thing like that out loud? Uh, let me tell you, there's a lot of things I say out loud that after I say it, it's like, <laughs> dude, that sounded a lot better in my head. Yeah, but you're, <laughs> you're not. You, yeah, but you're not representing millions of people in a fashion of POTUS. You know, True. Start, you gotta, I wouldn't want to. But you got to remember, you're you're a dork. You used to be well, yeah. a supporter of, and now you're not. So you've got this kind of a, a advantage to me. Because I've been always watching it. So I don't have the, I don't have the experience of doing it. So I've been mocking all these people my whole life. I'm just used to mocking them. But yeah. I never, I never had the privilege of being one of them, and you know, enjoying all those freedoms and privileges that government provides for you. And now that I'm, you know, my age, being a pirate is it's not practical. Hmm. Yeah, well, I got, a, I got a wife and a dog and a cat now, so. Hmm. Honey, I'm home. And, uh, cook this leg, will you? Uh, what? It's human. <laughs> oh, well, cook it. Pirates do mm. that. Kind of, that's the kind of shit pirates... What do you think? Pirates got a fucking code? Hey, you know what? We're going to only do this, and we're not going to ever do that, because we're pirates, and we're... Fuck no. Pirates adjust to the crime. <laughs> that's why pirates, they're... Pirate, pirate Dread Robinson, or Roberts, or whatever his name was, he mm. didn't do that kind of stuff. How do you know? Because I, I watched the movie. <laughs> see, see our, our verbal definitions are so controlled. You know? And a pirate is somebody that will be cutthroat and do as one pleases at any given fucking moment. And there's very few of us that are like that. They call them the one percenters. And I never wanted to be a one percenter. But I enjoyed the fuck out of watching these idiots perform like... They were like, it, it's kind of pe bad to judge in this sense, but to me, in a sense, they were like the same shit they were mocking. Like, uh, I don't know, just the opposite side of the same fucking coin. You're really not proving anything except for that you might beat me into a coma if I disagree with whatever it is you believe. You know, so let's avoid all Hi, that. Bubba. Hey, you're dog. But you know what I mean? What a true pirate. Like a, a politician or a priest, they're pirates, but they're not true pirates. They're kind of like pussy pirates, you know, uh, pri pirates in training, but they'll never go the extra fucking mile at the end where they got to actually put the knife into somebody else, but they'll order other people to do it for them. 
and they'll as long as they have that ability, this is what the rest of us are going to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there's always going to be some dumbass out there with a price tag on his head that will hire out to whoever will pay him to be a violent slug. And they call it enforcement. Yeah, well, enforcement. So they're forcing the mind. And what does N? Hmm, I'm going to have to look that up now. Mm. <laughs> did I give you something to think about on the dark table? Yes, you did. Oops. Yes, you did. I was trying now, to just I, have fun today, make fun of the corona. It, okay. Well, you know, and, and I've always been a... a Beliver, you know, because there's always a lie hidden inside Somewhere. every belief. Yeah, sure, there has. And a lot of people don't realize that that lie is not necessarily out in your face, bald face lie. A lot of times, it's a lie of omission. Yeah, and, it's and one it, of those little half truth thingies. Yeah, cripples. You know, they the give you foundation. give you just enough yeah. information to get you to start going. Oh, hey, he's got an idea, and then they drag uh, you down a merry little trail. Not my trail, someone else's, but they drag you down this trail that is. So, out in the boonies, got you lost, you have a hell of a time finding your way back, but it's based on just a half truth, or even a quarter truth, but, um, yeah, okay, I'm trying to look up the, um, no, not suffix, prefix. <laughs> prefix. Yeah, <clears throat> the not prefix, suffix, prefix. Yeah, that, that other one. Okay. Ooh. Let's see. So, yeah, see, you got me working. Um, I do. Oh, it's to oh. cause. So, enforcement, to yeah. cause force upon the mind. Enslave, uh -huh. entrust, enrich, encourage, endear. You are causing it to happen. So you're causing force to happen upon the mind. Wow, thank you for that for that wonderful little tidbit of brain food and, and uh, breadcrumbs. That it, that'll be running around inside my mind for a few days now. Hmm. Going, whee! Just look at all these words that have N at the beginning of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See what you did? See what I did? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What did I do? Wow. I'm know, not I'm... guilty. I'm innocent. I blame the girl. Take her. It was all her idea. I'm just I'm just an accomplice. <laughs> <clears throat> well, when the judge says, it. "How do you plea?" That's I'm gonna start screaming that in court. I figure I'll get the best medical available. I'll have a good shot because they'll figure I'm just complete wackadoodle by that point. You know, it worked for Adam. Hmm. Eve took a bite of the apple first, and she told me to. She said, uh-huh, you want to get some num-nums tonight? You take a bite of this apple, son. That's how that worked. And yeah. so that's why women, that's why women have been trashed all these years is because Adam said, uh-huh, Eve talked me into it. She well, said me was not getting any num-nums if I didn't take a bite. Yeah, mm -hmm. but there's kind of a flaw in that little story about Adam and Eve. You know, oh, yeah? They had two sons. I know, Cain and Abel. Where'd all the other people come from? Well, they had two see? sons. You don't do <laughs> your mother. Have. You never, never, ever. It's against, oh, man. You don't even think of a yeah. horrible thing like that. It's not even something you want to look at somebody else and think about. It's just wrong. Ooh, mommy, mommy. Why are you crying? <laughs> oh, wow. That's just totally... Mm. Wow. Thanks. I'm going to go back to thinking about words that start Okay. And I'm just saying, yeah. you know, leave it. Because <laughs> you've, like, totally traumatized right. my mind. But, and my metal Etch-A-Sketch ain't working yet. All right. Well, the Woo! people that brought that piece of shit story to you are the same people that made it illegal to smoke cannabis and to use hempicus to make anything out of. So, oh. guess, guess who's still a little hot about this little problem? Well, yeah. Uh, me! Uh, and you know who's even more pissed off than I am? Uh, I don't know. The guys and gals that are sitting doing American time in a jail where since they were arrested, it wasn't a crime anymore. But they got arrested. It was a crime. 
So wait a minute. You know, it, yeah. Okay, so what did this, you see? What Grimmy dropped in the chat? I'm no, inter- I was I'm too bu- I was too busy ranting. Slash cool. somebody it's, and Rob works. Let's see what he it's posted. sweet. Okay. It's awesome. Thank you, Grim. Mm. That's totally amazing. Oh, you. so yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see what Rob. This is up to Rob and Larry. I'm just the presenter guy. I'm not making any decisions about nothing. I do enough radio where I run shit. So this this is more to get Larry's information on radio so people can hear him. Yeah. So I have a lot of opinions about such, this, that, and the other. But this guy has a goal, Larry. And when people see what this, I can see it in my head. I don't know how to explain it to anybody else. But there's other companies that are uh, they're self-promoting, that they've got a process that they can create this and they can do that because there's thousands of companies all over the world right now, these little startups that nobody's going to fucking fund so that none of that can ever take over big oil. (laughs) But they're going to do it anyway. It'll just take a little longer. Well, yeah. But they're making it real, and the Internet is the greatest freaking tool. So what do they do? They lock this down. Stop us from communicating with each other physically. Mm-hmm. Clever. They got I know. They can put you in quarantine instead of taking you to prison. Where is quarantine? Mm-hmm. Is it an actual place? Isn't this a beautiful story, though? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you wanted to enslave 7 billion people, what would you do to accomplish that? I know what I would do. I would be an evil genius, and I would come up with a virus that would just scare everybody to fucking death and force them to comply to my demands. And my demands would start out, well, kind of cool. You know, hey, wash your hands. Hey, wipe your ass after you take a dump there, sport. That's what the toilet paper's for. Things like that. Helpful things. That would help us as a species. And uh, and don't buy one ply toilet paper or you might just drag one of your digits down Mud Alley. But just saying. At the end of the first six months of my reign of terror, you would all be my abject slaves. And I would have total control over all your movement and activity finance. You would only eat what I allowed you to eat where I allowed you to eat it. What do you think of that? I still think the Earth is in quarantine. Am I diabolical enough to be like one of those guys that takes over the world? I don't know. Let me hear your... <laughs> oh, wow. You do that good. It, see, I've got good. it. I might I might qualify as leader of the E-world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this just kind of puts it into perspective even more clearly for me that what an illusion we live in. A bunch of fucking monkeys. You give them a threat and they dance. Tell them some stories. You don't even need to prove anything anymore. Just got to tell them so. They all believe you. Uh, mm. I just... Okay, I'm mm-hmm. listening to you, and I'm scrolling on Twitter, mm-hmm. and i got to share this in the Uh-oh. chat. She's oh, my Lord, that's chat. freaking brilliant. Twitter <laughs> in the brilliant. chat. All <laughs> hands on deck. All hands on deck. Twitter in the chat. <laughs> if I don't laugh, I'm going to get mad at you. <laughs> Let's see here. And Grimmy posts. Improvise, adapt, overcome, and I love that. Wow, yeah, clever. Okay. <laughs> well, it didn't tickle me as it tickled you. I was still, I, I was still on drop in the coil, state of the art energy, with Larry, Rob, and Flash. I even got in there, but. uh Man, I'm really looking forward to spending time being more serious to a degree. Not completely, like a complete, you know. But, you know, a little bit. Like, I hardly said shit for the first hour. (laughs) 
I know. I was like and totally impressed. Caught me off guard. I was going, hey, wait a minute. Huh. Am I falling apart here? I can't think. No. But what I, I did want to assume the role on the show as is actually Larry's enemy, the devil's advocate. And my duty to the show is to bring up the opposition to what he's doing and reasons why what he's doing is wrong. So he could tell us, no, you're full of shit. And this is why you're full of shit. And I think it's a pretty good thing. Well, yeah. And Rob was just, Rob was way different than I'm used to Rob. Rob's a quieter, you know, he's a curmudgeon. And he's got, you know, his little attitude thing. That he's a quiet soft-spoken guy. And then he gets on the radio with Mary Woods. <laughs> and Rob has <laughs> questions. <laughs> it was like, well, yeah, but and you can't do this. And Larry's on the other side very calmly. No, you can't. But we can. <laughs> How? <laughs> Explain it to me, damn it. Master, tell me. <laughs> and that's what I got out of it because... I could see Larry's side of this in one way because I know Larry. I know what he's talking about. And I could see Rob's side of it because I'm a student learning all this stuff and I want to understand it as best as I can. And I don't have half the grip on it that Rob has. So I'm way behind Rob. And if Rob's struggling, imagine where I'm at. <laughs> Algebra yeah. fucking formulas. Holy fuck, you guys are killing me here. <laughs> you know? But... I have the intelligence to understand what an algebra formula is for, what it represents. So I don't need to know how to get through the process to understand the end result in every situation. You know? Yeah. Like turning on the computer. I can turn it on, but when I fuck something up, I cry, grim, grim, <laughs> help, help. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it again. <laughs> I've been a bad little dork, and I've looked at my computer. <laughs> help, help. Oh, and I resemble that so much. <laughs> I mean, God, ask Grimmy how many times while I was doing the rocket chair, <laughs> I pushed a button. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was, I was there. Oops. Watched it. Yeah, but, oh. Grim, Did I do that? Exactly. <laughs> and, and see, Grim's strength is our weakness. There you go. And then and he tolerates us and he helps us along. You know like the like the curmudgeon -y uncle that goes Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, little and he puts us in a headlock and yeah. scobs the knob and yeah. well he can't do that now cuz coronavirus and the dandruff might get him sick. But you know other than that. Yeah, but we share the load. True. Yeah. Would you, would you like to share a load? <laughs> Uh, hmm. Okay, non-smoker, don't get all sexual on me now, weirdo. <laughs> Jeez. I was talking about the devil's lettuce, not the ah. devil's boobies. For crying out loud. My wife would just go, hey, what the fuck is wrong with you anyway? Hmm. What? She's sitting over I'm the yonder only hearing half a conversation. So, poor, ah. poor Cirque. <laughs> well, that's, that's like Wayne. He's sitting over here. And every yeah. once in a while, I hear him laugh. But for the most part, he's, yeah. he's like, I have no clue what you guys are talking about. But you're freaking hilarious. Uh, ah, the good old days. <laughs> but I did want to uh, take him another chance at uh, pitching the old Larry and Rob thing. Because he's... These guys are, uh, hmm. they work well together because the one guy that asks the question understands the answer that he's given by the guy he's asking the question. Me, not so much. It takes me a little longer. I got to do a little, hmm, what does this word mean? What does that word mean? Thing. But after the process is over with, and then I reflect, and, oh, I get it. So how I came to the, the decision about the algebra. There's a, always, everything's a math equation in some level if you look at life through math. That's how you see, there's a reality out there of people that do that. Everything in life is a math equation. So therefore, there's a reality. You can see it if you choose to. Ah. Well, all right. 
I'm watching this program with Cirque the other day. We put these murder shows on, let them run for a while. And they had one that I actually remembered, and it was about a cult that wanted to go to this other planet, and blah, blah, blah. So they killed themselves to go to wherever. But they believed it. See? It doesn't matter what we tell other people. It matters what we believe. That, that's the whole thing that we're doing. Yeah. You're actually living out the things that you believe in kind of a social way, I would say. Well, yeah. Well, there you go. And the truly rebellious. And it's not as popular and as often as people think. But TV makes you think there's big crime sprees and waves out there. No, you know, I think that's just cops randomly trying to not be in any trouble. So they pick on harmless people that they can arrest and take to jail. Let the bad yeah. guys fight it out amongst yourself. I ain't fucking with that shit. I want this easy target that I can handcuff and put in the back of my car and kill five hours of my shit. By God. Kill five hours of it? Well, whatever. Wow. They took a woman. I harped on this before. They took a middle-aged, 60-odd-year-old woman arrested her, lost her in the jail thing for almost two months, give or take. And it was uh, cotton candy in her that they arrested her for. So what? why does it take that long to decide what the fuck you arrested somebody's grandmother? It takes two months to figure out you made a mistake? This is a business, people. They don't care who you are, who you're related to. None. That's They're beyond all that. They're, they're body counting. And they call it they call it crime prevention and all this other shit. It's not. They're body collectors, revenueers. And if ah. you ain't been touched by their loving hands yet, chances are, especially now with this big corona crap and all this coming crap that they got mm-hmm. planned, <laughs> man, you can't hide anywhere. Ugh, they're gonna make you like a. Hmm. What is it going to be? If you go out in public, you're going to be like attracting the police to you because what? They're outside. <laughs> you know where? Oh. Where did all? Well, hasn't got that bad where I'm at yet, but I can see the government being capable, controlling their people and telling them, "Hey, motherfuckers, stay inside, or we'll have you detained." They don't have the manpower, I don't think. They don't have the place to put people. Plus the unwillingness of this public. Wow. You know, they're not they're not like Americans. They, they don't take their government as like hmm, much of a threat as I do. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I think they would join them with their neighbors against the government and go, fuck you, government. Because I've seen them do that before since I've been here. Mm. Oh, Grimmy just posted a link. Oh, my God, the brothels are going. The world's oldest profession is now also suffering. Old link. From- no, wait, no. The other one I saw was about people that were in a brothel and they had to stay in the brothel. You know, well, this one, the global shutdown continues and it's mm. taking brothels with it. Egad! Wow. And got What's the NFL going to do? They say that, that prostitution is the world's oldest profession, but I think that's just another way of saying that politicians have been around for a really, really long time prostituting themselves to the highest bidder, and these ladies that are doing it out in the open are the ones that are getting the rap for it. Well, Do you ever think about that? Uh, no, I, the things that I have thought about would not be things that you thought about. I have a dick, woman. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> no, I think of things that are kind of obscure, though. Like, with this, all this big hoopla over the last, like, 30 years, 40 years, 60 started, really. The topless and the strip bars and all that. And I've always seen that when I look upon it. I see it as just a way to to um, hmm, not appreciate females, but pretend okay. you are, but really you, you're not there appreciating anything. See, and to me, topless, real, I don't think topless should be that big of a thing. I mean, 
guys have boobs, girls have boobs. Deprive girls us of boobs, bacon. Yes, are, Deprive yeah. us of bacon, and you watch how everybody wants bacon. See? Well, Deprive you, us. You look, uh, at, you look at a lot of the aboriginal. We're not aboriginals. We're America. But you know what? There is a reason <laughs> that they're happier than we are. Yeah, because they're you know, running or, around half naked eating the fucking fruit. <laughs> well, the only thing that they cover is the nether regions, you know, the, the parts that are different. Yeah, unless, That's your, what they unless your palm tree ain't big enough to cover your parts. But, you know, <laughs> whereas we're going around going, oh, my God, look at that woman. She's nursing her baby. How dare she do that in public? That's disgusting. Hey, lady, like your cleavage hanging out of your dress, by the way. Look mm. at that woman over there. Put a towel over your shoulder so that child can smother while it's trying to eat. But, oh, God, look at her in that string bikini. You know, it's like, what the hell, people? How freaking moronic is this? I mean, they are designed, they are there for a reason. Yeah. And yet, for some stupid reason, the Western culture has just gone absolutely asinine. I just, over I just explained it to you. Do you need to cut your finger and write this in blood? No, I understand. Here, let me try I it mean, one more my, time. My brother. Uh, used to hoard National Geographic down uh, in the basement. I'll simplify it. Uh, one word. What? Deprivation. That's it. If you deprive us of dog shit, there will be a group of men that will come forward and say, we want our dog shit. You have no right to withhold our dog shit. We want it back. See, and I think it's a half-truth syndrome. All right. Well, I'm looking at oh, the reality. Oh, oh yeah. look at this. These are versatile. They are useful. They come in multiple sizes and colors, and yet you can't mm -hmm. look at them. Deprivation. That's what I'm talking about. It's a half truth. No, it's not, because where it is common, it is not the same. When I was in England, they you used to have a, a thing on the newspaper called the Page Three Girl, Topless Girl. Mm -hmm. And it was just so common that nope. It, they didn't see it as anything wrong. It was the page three girl. What are you, what's your big problem? See, but if you were from another culture and you went there and you saw the page three girl, and your whole life was all censored, news newspapers and shit like that was all censored, then you would go, "Hey, what the fuck is this girl after us for on the newspaper?" Ah, 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 ah. Like that. And yet, that is something in Western cultures. And that's that, you also, know, people freak out about seeing the, but not all Western cultures. And yet, you know, you get, and that's where, you know, you have little pockets of. The, yeah, but that, that was in the 90s, too, when I was in England, you know, London. The, I, I went in 96, but not for long enough to bother paying attention to anything. I just was passing through it. <laughs> see, I think the moment when they said, oh, women must cover their tops. Mm. You know, in polite society, women mm. must cover their tops. Mm. That's pretty much, cause, and yes, it was the deprivation thing. But no, it's, it's like, all it is, Mary. There's nothing more to it. Look. But the deprivation mm. stemmed from a half-truth. But it doesn't matter what it stemmed from. It's still the point of the, there's the answer to why. Beyond deprivation, explaining how it happened doesn't fucking change anything. It doesn't change how we look at it now. It doesn't explain anything about the past. Deprivation. Yeah. You tell a man no, and he's going to do it. End the story. Well, yeah. You it's want to do a radio thing. podcast and talk about it in detail. <laughs> Very good. Well, you know, someone tells me I can't do something. It's like, really? Hold my beer. Watch this. I'm depriving but, you, see? I'm proving my well, point. Well, yeah, it's... And, one is deprivation, the other is the spite bone that kicks in. But so, yeah. boobs are so pretty. Come on, no. They just are. Even women like looking at boobs. Just something that we do. It's just a thing. And the deprivation part comes in, and it tilts that 90% of wackadoodles out there that among us that walk around with not quite enough blood to operate both heads at the same time. Yeah, one of those. Oh, look, we've we've all got them. But they're but pretty. You can't, you can't look at half of the populations because, well, that's wrong. Ooh. That's wrong. No, your half is You know, it's like good. belly buttons. Everybody's got a freaking belly button. Really? Some are innies, some are outies. What about Frankenstein? Did Frankenstein have a belly button? Or Dracula? Huh? 
Think about it. I don't think Frank. Well, <laughs> Frankenstein was made from other people's parts. I don't. I don't know if Doctor Frankenstein. What about the invisible the man? Belly Did he have a belly button too? <laughs> that now that would be interesting to find out if the invisible man showed up at my house and I accidentally bumped in and did the Pillsbury Doughboy thing to him. Would he go? <laughs> I don't know. Accidentally, huh? Okay. <laughs> Accidentally on purpose. No, I was just thinking belly well, button. Well, if I could invisible. see him, it would be an invisible kind of. <laughs> now, and Batman. Do you think Batman has the belly button? Yeah, because it shows on his on his uniform, his uh, Batman uniform, uh, right there in yeah, that six pack yeah. abs. But you know what? A lot of people don't know is everybody's got six pack abs. It's just <laughs> a lot of us it's covered under a soft sided cooler. <laughs> You're so well, I don't know. I I'm just I'm the opposite of that. I've got like four and a half pack, <laughs> right, honey? Oh, is that is that a short <clears throat> joke? Yeah, oh. I've got a four pack, not a six pack. Oh, okay. But in my younger days, when I was probably just about forty, when it ended. People bigger than me would bump into me in bars and shit like that, and they would be the ones that would move. Because up until that age, I'd been you know physically active and did a lot of outdoor kind of shit. And then at about forty, I stopped all that labor work and crap that was keeping me fit and softened up. <laughs> ah, so you have developed a soft sided cooler. Uh-huh. Well, no, just a softer outside. I'm not as uh, solid as I was 20 years ago. Mm. Yeah. But it's just funny because now that I've reached this age where people are gentler in public. They don't bump into me like they did when I was in my you know late 30s and such. Now they kind of, oh, sorry, old fella. <laughs> Here, <laughs> can can I get you your walker, sir? <laughs> Well, okay, maybe I'm You're exaggerating. You're such a cute old feller. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least I'd make a better friend than enemy. So that's something to hold on to. You know what I mean? Huh? Yeah, huh? I do. Huh? Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to hit my pipe and laugh it all off, Mary, because, you know, why... Why sit and, and cower to the threat of the system at this point in the game? You know, where where have we not seen all the different aspects of this little particular game we're playing now? We've seen all the pieces over the years, just in different games. Now they put it all together in one big game. So that tells me this is their last shot. They ain't got nothing else but this. And this ain't going to do it. They're they're counting on two weeks to get control of seven billion people. No, I don't think so. Well, yeah. If you yeah. were okay, and if, I, did you see the other? Was it yes? Just yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, Bill Gates announced he's stepping down from Windows. Mm-hmm. No, I, I don't. From, didn't and know that. from one other thing. I know that now, but no, I didn't. Yeah. You are so knowledgeable. Ooh, I mean, you're off. You are present. I am pre- Well. So, I so okay. It. So, this douchebag steps down. What the fuck do you think is going to change? The people that told him what to say are going to tell the next douchebag that takes over for him what to say. So, it doesn't well, matter. Yeah. There's no such thing as Bill fucking Gates, you clowns. Been played like fiddle like always. <laughs> just like what's that other idiot Bezos or uh, whatever billionaire pops up Elon fucking Musk pay some fucking actor enough money they'll go tell you anything you want to hear on a radio station for as long as you want to talk they'll tell you what you want to hear yeah well it kind of cheapens this reality that we live in just a tad for me I don't know about you but I trust about 5% of what I see Maybe. Maybe not even that anymore. Because the results that I live with are so alien from the crap that I'm told is going to happen. 
And then I go out in the real world and I think, wow, nah, they're full of shit. Mm-hmm. And I still, today I was on Minds earlier and somebody else beat me to making the question and written it out about, do you know anybody at all personally that has or died or has this virus? No. We're, nobody that's communicating with somebody else has a bloodline direct to a victim of this devastating fucking virus that's going to take 2% of the population out. But, well, you know how miraculously every other fucking way to die has just been a, been solved? No heart attacks, no gunshots, no no poisonings, no nothing. No terrorist bombers. Everything's finished. It's only people dying from the coronavirus. And did you know that a virus cannot survive on its own? It needs a host to survive in? That's so, the rumor. And they, they can't actually, you know, get a picture of a virus because the virus has invaded a host cell, and so basically what you're getting is a picture of the host cell. You're not really – all those wonderful little images that they put out there, those are CGI. Those are animations. Those are someone's interpretation of what the virus would look like if if we could see the virus. <laughs> this is what it would look like. I'm telling you, man, they, they, got, they saw the episode of The Borg. And they didn't realize they were talking about us. Yeah. We are the fucking Borg. It's just, wow. Who who would, I would never believe they could have got this far. As far as I see this, it's gotten past a lot of other people. Other people look at the same shit I'm looking at and do not see the chains tightened. So, hmm. So there we go with perspective, you know, my history, I'm an older guy and all this, that, and the other thing. So I'm bound to see this from a different light than somebody else. How about you? How do you see it? Uh, with my eyes. Okay, here, I'll, I'll sum it up real quick because we're so late in the show. All right. I'm a diabolical scientist and I want to take over the world. I've created uh-huh. a virus to do it. How do I get my virus out there? What components are necessary? Who do I have to enact into my web of deceit and trickery to make this all happen? First, you need a host for your virus. You need a host. And, oh, looky there. We've got like 7 billion humans wandering around on the planet. Let's let's make a few of them a host. Yeah. Oh, Grimmy says the virus needs a host to survive. Sounds like government to me. Yeah, Grim, you're right. You're right. So does that mean government is a virus? Because you really can't see it. You just see the components that are, yeah, there you go, Grim. In any case, get yourself a host. You know, government, government employees are infected with government-itis. And they go around being all governmental. And and officious and controlling and but we've got squiggles written on paper, so therefore you must do this kind of thing. They have been infected hmm. with whatever this is, and and then you know once you get a certain amount infected and they go out, then it depends on what the infection rate is. Now, from what I understand, coronavirus the infection rate is one in three. Hmm. So one person goes out, they might infect three. I think that's how that works. Sounds like a lot. Uh, well, it's either it's either they'll go out and infect three, or they'll infect one person out of the three. I'm not, but it's one in three. I I do remember seeing the studies that yeah, one in three, and the flu is one in two. So okay, so you once you get your hosts to where they're doing what they're supposed to do. Then you get them to go out there and mingle amongst the others. Hi, how you doing? Let's shake hands. I'm going to breathe on you. You don't mind, do you? And next thing you know, you start getting other little pe- little hosts popping up, you know, and they start going out. And they unknowingly, unwittingly, much like the mass population these days, they go out there and go, hi, 
How you doing? I just heard about this wonderful thing called government. How would you like to try some? It's no, it's not a virus, but I do have a vaccine for you. Now, it won't necessarily give a, you know, make you immune to it, but it will make you a carrier. And so you can't go anywhere where people, you know, might be sick or something because you could shed some of that and make them die. And, well, they're no good when they're dead because they can't spread the stuff. No, but you can sell them for parts. Well, yeah, you can sell the parts. And make soylent, soylent gray out of the old ones. Yummy. Yeah. I'm going to open up oh. my, my own soylent gray stand. I'm going to maybe have Cirque and her mom jar it for me. Ooh. But I'm not going to tell them that. I'm going to tell them it's something oh. else. <laughs> but, oh, so you're going to say, Cirque, you want to try canning something for me? Well, I wonder if that's what they mean by it's in the can now. You know, you hear that uh, kind of crap always said, you know, when they're doing their Hollywood programming. Well, it's in the can. I might have got away with it if I didn't bring it up on the radio. But See, I have all these brilliant ideas. I just have a bad way to apply them to life. I'm just Hey, you know what else is in the can? Pilot. What's in the can? The toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> oh, moving along. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot funnier in my head, okay? I guess. But, <laughs> see, all this panic stuff, and people are panicked, not over yeah. a virus. They're panicked over being in a lockdown for two weeks, mandated by Mother State. And what I don't get is who enforces it? You know, well, see, and that's the beauty of this, because a lot of people are just carriers. They're not necessarily infected or right. they're not sick with right. whatever. Right. That's that's the government employees. They're the ones that are sick with it. But the carriers mm. are the masses, mm. and they go around and they, you know, oh, oh, wait a minute. Hey, I'm going to report you to the government, you know, next thing you know. Are you really? The carriers are the ones that are doing the enforcing. <sighs> I'm so sad. I don't want to be. I know. I don't want to be enforced on, man. Sorry. Oh, take it out of the box, Mary. It's going to hurt. It's going to leave a mark. I know. It will leave a mark. But. Well, I'm still saying the way the, the portrayal of our guy. I don't know. I, I've been through the end of the world so many fucking times. I'm still here. So, you know, and yeah. this is not my first virus, but it is my first inner national slash interracial virus. The rest ah. of them were contained to certain places, I would assume. <laughs> I don't ah. know. But this one, this one not only managed to escape the laboratory, but look, it's every fucking where except West Virginia. <laughs> it jumped borders. <laughs> but it's every fucking where except the only safe place in the world right now is West Virginia. Really? That's what well, I read you know. on the internet today. You know West why West Virginia, Virginia is safe? Because... And even coronavirus knows. You start hearing banjo, <laughs> banjos playing, you better run. Wow. Vinny would be so proud. <laughs> Sure of it. Yes, he would. Yeah. You just told a Vinny joke on the dork table in his honor. <laughs> hmm. You know, I don't know why they didn't make a female version of that show. You know? Four guys oh. go out into the woods and they run into these two girls armed to the nipples and they want to fuck. You know, it wouldn't mm. be such a tra Well, it's just weird if, if it would have been two girls trying to fuck all of them. It wouldn't have been the tragedy it was with the one guy. <laughs> that no, but that it, it, yeah, that kind of put a crimp in their little uh, rowing down the river weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. they got kind of violent, did horrible shit. <laughs> but well, you know, I was gonna say women don't do, but then again, I I've seen some women that have been pretty freaking scary, and so. Yeah, I'm not going to put anything past any gender. Really? This, this, this uh, is scary people out there. Where? 
West Virginia, where the virus out, won't out, go? Out there in yeah. outer space. You why, know, what's, what's, why? What's inside your meat suit is your inner space. What's outside why? of it's outer space. Why won't the virus go to West Virginia? What's their secret? Because it's the banjo music. <laughs> And those people don't care if they don't have toilet paper. They just use wash rags or corn cobs or just don't use poison ivy. So their their lack of toilet toilet paper stock explains why that one particular place in the whole world is totally free of this world crushing virus. Hmm. Yep. Well, if it was just bad banjo playing, then Vinny could sell, solve it. No, that can't possibly be the answer. It it must be the lack of toilet paper. That's yeah, we, we've narrowed it down. We'll send this off to our team of experts. <laughs> you know, now that I think about it, yeah. all these people that have, you know, where they go shop, they've run out of toilet paper and stuff. Hey, they're golden now because there's no toilet paper for the for the virus to you know, in fact, or in fast. But, but Miss Mary, we are making light of, of a very serious situation that engulfs the entire globe, all and all yes. the and all the people on it, and maybe some dogs. <laughs> and oh, but dogs, dogs cannot catch the coronavirus. I think it's because they can't open the bottle. But that's just well, my thought. Maybe the butterflies will catch it and pass it on to us, or oh. maybe the bees will catch it. These these people are brilliant. They know how to trap us with logic and reason that you can't argue against without looking like a moron. <laughs> <laughs> it never fails. All I got to do is say, round spinning globe, fly through space. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. And the eyebrows, just you just see people just cringe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, Now, that wait, wait, wait. Now, you. there's two ways to look at these people, and I could be all snooty and go, aha. You know I'm right. <laughs> you can't even look <laughs> upon me. I'm so correct. That would be the Fredo approach. Or I could use uh-huh. the Michael Corleone approach and say, I'll talk about my business this one time only. Only this one time and never again will we ever talk about my business. Now, what is your question? Are you a oh. crook? No, I'm not a crook. Now, go away. <laughs> ah, That's yeah. how you do it. What? Well, see? Ah. I've taken... I've taken taken over the world lessons my whole life, Mary. I've got well, this. I got this shit down. That's because you're a Mexi Jew. Hmm. Well, I know this much. If you're smart like Fredo, you're going to end up in the lake with a bullet in your head. So, uh, I don't want to be smart like exactly. Fredo. Exactly. Who do I want to be smart like? Hmm? Hmm? Um. I want to be smart like my dog. No, I want to be smart like Michael. And when his wife says, are you a crook? I'm only going to answer this one time. Don't you ever ask me again. And he lies to her. And he spoke. That was it. That was your one chance. <laughs> See, I want, to be, I want to be smart like my dog. But who, ta- who would tell the truth? Whenever there's something that, you know. That you know, doggy goes up and he sniffs it and, and he shits on it or yeah, pisses on it yeah. and it kicks dirt over it. Yeah. You want to do That's, that? Really? I don't want to do that. That that explains well, the not toilet out in the paper. Yard because I'd have to clean it up later. But. <laughs> I don't. I don't think humans should behave that way. We do it verbally, but I don't think we should. But we do. Well, yeah. Oh, I've seen people wipe their ass all over the chat rooms for years, years and years and years. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I have seen people wipe their ass all over conversations in like face-to-face public. Too. I think I've, I think I've done it to time my, to myself, little miss. Yeah. Those kind of people, I tend to walk mm-hmm. away because I do not wish to have the defecation when it makes mm-hmm. high-speed impact with the rotary oscillator hit me. Mm-hmm. Ah. The old shit hitting the fan, he. Uh huh. Well, I think we're beyond the shit hitting the fan. I think now we're the shit hit the fan so long ago that we didn't notice it. They did it in a way that was kind of subtle, and they they called it something different. And then the last twenty years just go to show you that boy, we lost we lost the whole country. Where did where did America go through the last twenty years? Um, I think it changed the locks. 
and mm-hmm. turned out all the lights because yeah. it went, no, mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't want to let you guys, no, no. We see what you did, and we're not letting you back in. Well, it seems to me they're kind of running out of uh, hmm, willing debt slaves. The willingness yeah. part, the newer generations aren't like we were. They're way different. They're, a lot of them are, um, what do you call it, socialist. That's where that Bernie crowd came from, young people. Because, I mean, what, what people our age think that, you know, it's your problem, buddy. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, it ain't. See, we're more anarchist kind of folk, and we go, oh, shut the fuck up, you whining bitch. Go complain to your freaking government. Leave me alone. I didn't do it. What? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm against every fucking thing that all these people are for. I always have been. The only fucking time I ever do what I'm told, they got to threaten me. If you don't do this paperwork, we're going to not allow you, blah, blah. And then I go, okay, give me that fucking paperwork. I'll do it. But until that happens, man, it's like an act of Congress to get me to comply. Yet, in public, I'm a sociable, sensible human. Don't create disturbance. (laughs) Never mind, Mary. Mary's not interested in my boring life. (laughs) <laughs> now, if I went out and robbed a bank, I bet you guys would want to hear all the damn details of it. <laughs> yeah, living off, living off the celebrities out there living your life for you. That's Tom, what's his name? Frank's got the damn coronavirus. Okay. Him too. Got the coronavirus. There you go. You know him. He's a celebrity. Remember, he yeah. was just at your house the other night having beer in the backyard. What? Who the fuck is Tom Hanks? You don't know who Tom Hanks is? Not really. I've seen him on TV, no. but who the fuck is he? Oh, I other than seeing him, you know, do stuff on TV or yeah. in the movies. Yeah. Have yeah. you met him? Do you know him? No, I haven't uh, met him. No, uh, I don't know him. Okay. Well, I met Rosie Greer in a gas station when I was a teenager one night and got a giggle out of, hey, you're, yeah, oh, yeah, that's me, cool. And it, that was it, I, you know, but I don't think he remembers it. Hey, I don't, I don't think he remembers it. That's what I was getting at. Well, I don't think Bob Seger remembers meeting me either. Oh, but, I bet you he know. does. He probably, well, got a, probably got a tattoo of your boobs on his butt cheek. No, actually, I think if he <laughs> did, kidding. it would be... Good Lord, remember that gal when we did that concert in Wichita? And all she could do is say, it's just not fair. It's just not fair that a guy should have prettier hair than a girl. Because that's serious. I was so freaking contact high stoned at the concert. that By the time I actually got to meet him, that's all I could say. You're giving up your age, too, because he's been gray and short-haired for a few years now. I know. Well, wow. you know, I got to meet the guys in Sweet first because they were the opening band, and then I got to meet him, and it's like Ooh. I was such total stone out name, name dropper, yeah. bragging yeah. about drug addled hippie days. Yeah, well, Ooh, yeah. you old trollop. Huh? Ah, I'm going to start. Up. I'm going to start rumors about you on reallibertymedia.com dot com chat. You just do that. That's what you I'm going to do. do. That. I triple dog dare you. Yeah, you go right yeah. ahead. I'm going to type in the big letters and everything. Be yelling at you. Ooh. Yeah. Are you going to go all caps lock on me? Fuck yeah. I'd be like oh. Vinny, Vinny Plus. Damn. Wow. I'm going to be afeard. Be very afeard. Well, it won't be afraid. It'll be more like you'll laugh yourself so you'll piss yourself that you leave the damn toilet paper you stocked up on. Well, you It'll know, justify your hoarding. <laughs> Circle, Circle says yeah. that a truly blessed person is someone who has moments that cause you to laugh so hard you lose control of your bodily functions. Yeah, oh and boy. You know, when yeah. you look at it like that, that mm-hmm. really is a truly blessed person. Yeah, she has a few of those moments. One one night I was laughing so hard my ribs hurt. I had to beg her to stop talking. <laughs> it was just... <laughs> I was everything because I was high or whatever you want to blame it on. 
But uh, it was just one of those times where everything your partner says, making you giggle or laugh or whatever, and it got painful. My ribs were hurting. I'm just, oh, stop talking. You're killing me here. So <laughs> it sounded like me making more jokes and her responding back to it instead of shutting up. She was being funnier. <laughs> I know Wayne and so, I've had some of those moments and it's like, Oh man, Oh man, stop. And, I can't walk to go to the bathroom and I need to go really bad. And that kind of, <laughs> that kind of freedom with another person is rare. Yeah. I can't think yeah. that a handful of people in life that I was comfortable enough around that if I pissed myself laughing, I wouldn't be the end of my life. I, Oh my God. Like your mom or something, you know, your grandmother. Yeah. Cause your grandmother, when you're a young man, your grandmother's looking down on you. She's a grown up and all that. And then you she, you laugh so hard you piss yourself in front of her. It would make you look kind of childish. <laughs> yeah. You know the way I was raised, indoctrinated to see all this crap that we see. Ninety percent of it's nonsense anyway. Well, yeah. You know, my my least favorite interest in other people is truly. What's that? And it's something we've never spoken about because I'm so against the whole, why is it even a thing that we should even talk about it? That's how against what I'm going to talk about here I am. <clears throat> okay. Want to know what that thing well, is? What is that thing? Okay, I'm going to start it and I'm going to end it myself and then you can have fun with it. <clears throat> okay. Now. People have this new thing over the last about 50 years about getting their gender changed. They are presently men that want to become female or presently female and they want to become male. And Uh this is the part that confuses me. And it's in the answer to their question. And their answer is this. Well, do you want to be male or female? And I'm lost right there because they already are, but they don't want to be. They want to be something else. And because I don't have the problem, right, and and it doesn't involve me, I've never brought it up. But I brought it up tonight because it's like one of those, mo- it's the most baffling concept I can ever think of. I could never talk about it more than like this, five minutes. That's it. I don't know. <laughs> so in all these years, like when... Uh, uh, Becky Haynes tried to bring it up, and I walked right over. <laughs> ah, and bless her heart. Hi, Becky. But it gave Becky me. Becky and Don are probably watching us. Gave me a reason to remember Becky. So whatever ah. I went through all that crap right now for, which is what I think is, we do things for other reasons that we don't always really know at the time we're doing them. But most people have a clutch. And those people can control what they say out loud. And then me and you, borderline. (laughs) And sometimes we can stop it before it gets too far. And other times we got to say the whole fucking thing, no matter how ridiculous it may seem at the time. But it proves itself to make a point later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I get get a kick out of doing the dork table with you because of it. Because we're funny as fuck in the long run. Oh, yeah. But we talk about some, just some mind-melding topics that other people in the planet may not find so mind-melding. And the things that I find mind-melding, they find ordinary. Is my point. Because the Mm -hmm. age and the time I grew up in, I'm a lot older than a lot of people besides Circle. I know people I associate with that are in their 20s. And it just... Freaks me out that these younger people are so damn nice to me. When that's not what I was raised watching. I was raised watching the you know the younger kids be nastier to grown ups as they went on. Yeah. I don't find that. It's maybe it's my t- my turn, my time. I don't know, but I'm not getting a lot of resistance out of life. So that I could do a radio program every fucking couple of days and bitch about how shitty life is. Because life is really good for me. I, I don't, you know. I'm just Jewish. I could bitch about it. Shit, that's good. It's 
my nature. It's not my fault. But physically and in reality, wow, what a world. So all these little infractions, you know, like running out of eggs at one store, having to go to the other store to fucking find a box of eggs. Because my wife wanted some fucking eggs. So I'm going to go get her some. (laughs) Well, there you go. Okay, but I still live in a country where I don't speak the language, nor do I read the language (laughs) completely. But I've been here long enough to know where to go, like a local, to get eggs when there aren't any eggs. (laughs) Ah, see, See, and I know a few people that have chickens that I can get a hold of if I need to. And that's the, the equivalent of that is I had a second source where other people would only go to this one store. And not bother to go and assume, well, if this door's out, the other one is. And I went with the opposite idea and went, hmm, these people will open up on Christmas. I'll bet you they got eggs. And guess what they had when I went there? They had eggs. Ah, you figured it out. You're so smart. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Never mind. (laughs) I know. You're just scrolling. me to make sure I was paying patience. No, you're scrolling. You're always scrolling. Well, yeah, I'm always scrolling, but I'm listening, too. Hey, you know who you should listen to? Or maybe even talk to. You might even want to make a guest appearance and talk to Larry Woods on his new show, Dropping a Coil. Because they're not only related to electrical problems. He also... Yeah, I, oh. He does a lot of uh, healthy and what is now considered alternative healing stuff because i get a lot of links off of his uh limitless technology page on facebook right and the the point of all that i'm trying to to accomplish here with larry is to expose him to more people so more people get a chance to at least listen to him and hear what he's got to say and i believe more than not so the things i don't understand i'm trusting And the things that I've trusted that I understand today is because I trusted him and I tried it. He's the Mm -hmm. one that talked me into turmeric. Yeah. Whoa, and it's the most god-awful. If you do it for taste, you're some kind of a freak. But Well, but if you you work it in with your cooking, it's not so bad. I'm not like that. I don't want to do it like that. I want to just do it. So I do it in a shot in the morning. Ah, yeah. And it's well, you know, it's like I doing know a shot of whiskey. Freak you out, but yeah. I I put it in my coffee along with some cinnamon. Yeah, see, no, I it would. I'm so and sensitive then I do a, to a the just salt to cut the bitter. Yeah, I'm too sensitive to the uh, turmeric, the curry of it. So the I can taste the slightest amount, and after a certain t- amount of it, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. So it doesn't take much for my body to realize, oh, this is... So I just put it in water and shoot it. It's, I'm a grown man. I think it's, it's very uh, minimal. Yeah. On the shit, I got to do that scale. Doing a shot of turmeric rates like a negative 25 out of 10 mm. points. Yeah, you'd have to be a complete... Like, it's some kind of mama's boy that <clears throat> grew up Afraid of taste. Oh, it tastes like carrots. I can't keep. Oh, I'll break out. Or, you know, something like that. Well, and I also <laughs> have turmeric caplets too. But I and DoTerra started doing turmeric oil, mm. which uh, mm. ugh, it does not smell good. No. That, or at least not to me, it does not smell good. I could get the capsules and make my own if it was. So, see, to me, it just boil a little bit of water. Let it cool down yeah. to drinking temperature and shoot it. And then swallow, swallow that up with your nice coffee beverage, you know? And if you and really. You know, Dr. Well, Bergman uh, recommends that you drink warm or hot water hmm. while we're dealing with the flu stuff because hmm. that uh, viruses cannot survive in those kind of temperatures. See, I tell you, there's so many answers to these crappy shit problems they're creating for us. But they don't talk about the answer. They harp on the problem. So yeah. average Joe is just inundated with this, that, and the other, but never hears a solution. So hmm, I'm not buying into this crap solely on that principle alone. 
And if I'm the first one to go out of the RLM to the virus, whoops, <laughs> I was wrong, everybody. But so far, I'm still here. So, so much for your threatening, you know, end of the world thing again. Oh, uh, you know, if people would just adopt the the concept of right. the world right. ends every night when you go to sleep, and the next morning it's a whole new world because somewhere in the world something happened that changed reality. So even if it was just a dream that you had, it yeah. changed your reality. I can't understand your version of reality, though. I know. I can only understand a- mine, and I barely understand that. And I got cert <laughs> to deal with. Not only then, I got the dog, and then the dog and the cat. So the four of us in the same room at the same time with our four different uh, vibrations, Reality. realities, mm-hmm. we're all spinning at different speeds, all four of us. And the chaos just begins. It is the weirdest fucking thing. And then other times, it'll you know, you, all the chaos settles down, and the dog and the cat are, one's in the window sleeping, one's on the couch sleeping. And there's that little lull time where everybody's in sync, but it doesn't last very long. No. And you know who disturbs that kind of that in sync moment around this place? It's the cat. usually Snuffles. The cat. No, no. The little female dog. Dog. Cause mm-hmm. Yeah, because she'll lay there and she'll get all comfy on the pillows. She hogs the pillows so oh. that Bubba has to just oh. lay on the floor. Oh. But then all of a sudden she'll raise her head and she'll bark. And next thing you know, Bubba's up and bouncing and barking. And then she's up bouncing and barking. And then the cats are running around like crazy brains. Yeah. It's always. Oh. Oh. Well, here I blame the cat. I hear Pardon me? I, here I blame the cat. I, it's the cat's ah. house. The cat's lived here longer than all of us. The cat was here when we came to look at the house. The cat lived here. So he's been ah. here his whole life. He's never known another home. So this is really his house, and he lets us stay in it. Huh, honey? Yeah. Well, you know, you are its pets. You're its umans. Okay. I'm serious, because I'm the idiot the cat sits on the fucking stairs and cries. And guess which idiot goes up to let him in the room to feed him? <laughs> You. Da, 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 super dork. <laughs> you so, are the cat slave. Isn't that something? And I never, I never in a hundred years ever thought that I would be a cat slave. Yeah. But now that I am one, it's got its benefits. Well, yeah. And uh, the animals treat humans in their own particular fashion to each human. You know, the animal yeah. gets along with you in one way and gets along with Wayne in another. Yeah. And, well, sometimes these things are noticeable and obvious, and other times they're subtle. Nobody pays attention. But, man, my dog, Hannah, behaves one way with me, and then at this when we're home, this, like, aloof, oh, it's you kind of guy thing, you know? Yeah. And when when she catches my scent and I'm coming back from the store and Cirque and her are still walking home, the dog will drag Cirque to get me. <laughs> uh huh. Instead of waiting for me to catch up, that's the, that's my dog, like Dino. <laughs> mm-hmm. But when mm-hmm. I'm home, she does not behave that way. Yeah, well, it's very you know, my there. my critters behave well. Very dull, well, very boring part. stuff. I'm telling you, I'm not a rock star here in Freddie Town. Uh, That's okay. That's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, really, <laughs> only one of my critters behaves differently with Wayne than they do with me, and that's mm-hmm. Snuffles, because yeah. he calls her pretty girl. And, oh, Uh-oh. my God, she's, like, all fawning all yeah. over him. Yeah, they know tone of voice, animals. Yeah. Sure. And then after a while, they'll even learn words that you use. At a, but... For the most part, it's just tone. Because I tell my yeah. dog all kinds of horrible. When Cirque's at work, I'll sit mm-hmm. here and say the most disgusting shit to the dog, but in this nice tone. Because I feel whatever weird moment come across, I'm doing practice in the voice or whatever. And the dog knows by the tone whether I'm a problem or not. Hmm. Hmm? 
Oh, yeah, because when she's aggravated and barking, I've got another tone I can use with her that'll shut her up. Uh Mm Aha. Well, you know, they can. And I just read something on Twitter uh, earlier today about this gal that's um, training her dog telepathy. Telepathic. She should trade her banker to telepathically instead. What a dummy. Wow. But Play the her, stock market, lady. <laughs> apparently her dog is five months old and walks mm. without a leash in a, you know, even in crowds. Mm. Because, and, you know, I've, I mean, you talk to different people that are really good trainers or whatever. And even Gary L. had, um, had something about that about a year or so ago where you just think in images and you just kind of look at whatever animal you're wishing to deal with and you think in an image of what you want them to do don't you can't because they don't grasp the whole concept of don't bark Mm. so if you want them to be quiet Mm. you just look at them and have an image of them laying down calm and quiet and then just let it go I don't ever go. want to be that involved. No, thank you. But you know what? I did see. I saw a link that you just reminded me of. It's short. What's that? Uh, uh, Warthog was being groomed by a pack of, uh, what is it that attacks the the snake? Mongoose. Uh, a pack mongoose, of mongoose yeah. eat the the blood-sucking leeches off the warthog in a pack. And the warthog is just standing there while these other animals are just crawling all over him, drain, you know, pulling off all the shit that's draining his blood. It's like, wow, the nature, you know. So while you were talking about your dog being a certain behavior, I was thinking, wow, yeah, I saw this link about these wild animals helping each other and they don't even really probably understand that's what they're doing. They just do shit. And life is just normal to them. Whatever normal is to a warthog is got a bunch of mongoose crawling all over him in a field. Mm-hmm. Wow, if they did that to me, I'd panic. Yeah. Then I must not be a mongoose or a warthog. Apparently war- not. Or, or, or a, a warthog. warthog. Yeah. No matter what mm. anybody else has or says, yeah. you know that now. Wow. I, the Internet's helped me so much. <laughs> <laughs> but, see, and, and the the way I interpret these things and that I'm talking about in the long run is, I really think this is how we're supposed to get along mentally. Maybe not physically where we pack and pull the fucking... Uh, blood-sucking leeches off that one poor fucker that's got them. But mm-hmm. mentally do that, you know? Help each other out in ways to get beyond a box of thinking that you're, you know, you're sold in. You believe this is life, this is all life will ever be. Blah, we're all fucked. No, that's what you're supposed to believe, so that you'll behave as though you're fucked to make it real. Well, and that's, yeah... If you adjust your own vibration to where you wish it to be, where you are happy, and you just go around and you just stay in that vibration, it will start, you know, affecting others. I would like to end the show by saying this. To me, it proves the hypocrisy of organized religious belief. Because if you really believe there's a thing running life, and it does this, and it miracles that, and it does all these fucking wonderful things, then uh, why do you believe it? <laughs> Where is your proof, people? Because you don't behave that way. Not you, Mary, or Grimm, or anybody in particular, but as a collective, we are not very nice. Human beings are some... We're, we're not as kind to each other as animals are. And yet, some animals are not necessarily all that kind either. Like what? I mean, there, what there are instances. You? There are instances of of animals that yeah. you know just because they can. Like where? I mean, look at look at cats. Yeah. Well, I mean, seriously. Yeah. 
But we're the ones that domesticate. It's not like they had a cat union and said, we demand to live inside now. No, they probably way back in the day went, you know, those humans could be handy for building shelter for us so that when in the weather is crappy and we don't want to get wet, yeah, cats I, don't I, like water. No, I still think that's, most of them that's don't. a product of us domesticating a feral animal. You know what? I think they domesticated us. Well, you're I mean, who, who feeds them? Crazy Who woman. takes care of them? Who yeah. scoops their shit? It's out their of the fucking box? house. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, you know, if you could look at your cat the way you look at your banker, life would make sense. And if you don't have a cat, you should. If you want to know what the fucking definition of a banker is, get a cat. <laughs> that is go. exactly the equivalent in life of what a physical banker experience truly is is a cat because a yeah. cat can look right the fuck at you and then just get up and leave <laughs> yeah. not goodbye not bark not cry just leave no fucking apparent reason at all now i've got a a cat can also go uh, in on your bed yeah. and do the whole kneading the bread dough on mm-hmm. your pillow mm-hmm. And then hack up a hairball right there just for you. Oh, well, Dr. Cooper's got this new thing where he's just flops on his back on this wood floor. And, like, he's chasing spiders for, like, two or three seconds. And then he just stops. (laughs) 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 It's like me on mushrooms if I was a cat. You know, what would I do? Well, I just stop abruptly and flop on my back and start wiggling around like I'm having a seizure. And then I'll just stop. <laughs> <laughs> I've got pictures of this fucking cat. And he's, he's overweight. So we, he overates in wintertime. So he's a little heavy. But this is, you know, wow. My life has been reduced to, <laughs> instead of being terrified of other people, I don't. I'm not. I don't care. You know, because I've got all this fun See, stuff going on. And is that reduced to or is that elevated to? I don't know. You're going to get the different I, I'm result. I'm thinking it's elevated to because now instead of being, you know, concerned about other people and mm. what they might think or what they might do or don't what care. concerned about others, yeah. you don't give a crap about that. You'd much mm. rather stay home and watch your cat occasionally freak out. Pretty much. Yeah. But I'm not. I think that's freaking awesome. But I'm not afraid to go socialize in the bar. I went yesterday. I didn't go today because I had a little job. I had to fix something in the house. It needed immediate attention, which is really rare. You know, they do say that alcohol kills germs. And, well, I'm thinking if I got any germs internally. (laughs) I don't know if that works at that level or not. I don't know who would. I don't. I don't think it does. I don't I either. Don't think it does. You got however many billion, trillion, zillion cells in you that operate separately of each other, but as a unit. In it's very complex and hard to yeah really talk about. And we're at the end of the door table anyway. And I stopped doing. It. If you want to know the other shows available, open up reallibertymedia dot com and open up a schedule. And there's a you know. When somebody goes, somebody else comes along to replace them. Grim's been yep. pretty fortunate having yeah somebody on every day doing something, and uh, we got Larry Woods coming along on Thursdays now, and he we can keep Larry around. He has much, 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 much for your ears to hear. And not that you yes. don't, Mary. I don't mean to dismiss you. Or oh no, no, that. I understand. Larry Woods has got some very vital information, and he's I'd... yeah, he's older than us. He's you know. yeah. So I look up to him, you know, in a intellectual way, I would suppose. Because yeah, don't mess with old yeah. people because they've lived through what you're sitting there trying to figure out. Yeah, well, yeah. When, when Rob questioned Larry, he was just so specific to get an answer, and Larry was so cool about giving him the answer. It fit very mm-hmm. well. It was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm looking forward good. to doing some more, and I just wanted to make sure that you know, and you're always welcome to call in and talk to Larry if you uh, have the heart to do so. Okay. You know? Well, you might have a, a medical question that 
would suit him because he's heavy in it all the same things that you are, too. Yep, he's a pretty sharp guy. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me this weekend here at the You're Dark welcome. Table and Mission. I have one thing I want to say before we leave. Hmm? Remember, whatever you ask of the universe, it is always going to say yes. Always. Whatever you put out there. So if you say, I really, I don't like being poor, the universe is going to say yes. You know, I don't want to be sick. The universe is going to say, yes, I know, you don't want to be sick. So this is kind of its way of saying, be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. So there's my two cents worth. Hmm. Does that mean I got it? I think you did. Be careful what you wish for, because now you got circles. <laughs> well, and she's a she's a giggle fest every day. Well, isn't yeah, she? this is thinking. Poor me. Wow. Yeah, I know. Uh, and yeah. what a place to be locked down in, where I can still go to the grocery store and the bar. You know? There you go. There you. Go. There you go. Who could ask for a better deal? Uh, Good night, uh, everybody. Later, everyone. Have an awesome rest of your weekend. Wash your hands. Mm-hmm. Damn it. And your butt. <laughs> and your yeah. butt.